Hey there pre-med and welcome to this video where we're going to cover three MCAT style questions on enzyme properties. The questions will increase in difficulty and complexity and end with a critical reasoning style question that's most likely to show up on challenging MCAT sections. So stay on till the very end to make sure you have all the skills you'll need to get these questions right on your test day. Let's start with a level one question. Here we go. Based on the following data, which protein has the highest affinity for its ligand? Go ahead and pause the video and try this on your own first. All right, to answer this question, we first need to look at the data provided. So we're given the four proteins with their KD values. KDs are showing us our dissociation constants. And our dissociation constant will tell us how quickly our protein and ligand will dissociate from each other. So it's the opposite of affinity, right? So we're looking for highest affinity in our answer choices. And what we really want to say is, well, highest affinity means our lowest KD. Remember that dissociation constants mean that we are separating. So if we're looking for coming together or affinity, it will just be the opposite. So we now need to look at numbers and say, okay, we just need to pick the smallest KD, which will give us the highest affinity. So if we're looking here, our smallest KD, protein B. Now, one quick note on this question is that a lot of times the MCAT will test you on not just your basic understanding of KD and affinity, but on your ability to manipulate metric units. So in this question, I've given it to you all in molarity, but just be ready for things like millimoles, micromoles, not written in scientific notation, and you'll be tested not only in your understanding of affinity, but on your mathematical skills of unit conversions. So make sure to practice that as well. That was a fairly straightforward one-step problem on enzymatic data. Before we move on to our multi-step practice problems, please remember to subscribe to this channel. I post both content and strategy MCAT videos, as well as study and stress management tips for you to use throughout your prep. If you want to assess your math and data interpretation skills that we're touching on in this video, I do have an MCAT skills assessment link below, so go ahead and check it out. So now let's test our skills with a level two question on enzyme properties and data. All right, this question shows you the kinetic data for four enzymatic proteins in a table, and they're asking you if they all have the same ligand and concentration, which protein has the highest catalytic efficiency. So go ahead, pause this video, try it on your own, and then we'll walk through it together. Okay, so the first thing we need to determine is what is catalytic efficiency? So catalytic efficiency, I'll write it here, it doesn't have any kind of acronym, efficiency, the calculation for it is kcat over km. So we have km, but we do not have kcat in this table. Instead, we have vmax, which is typical, right? vmax and km are what we usually determine from our Michaelis-Menten enzymatic data. So now we need to think about what is kcat. kcat is vmax over enzyme concentration. All right, so vmax is on the numerator, enzyme concentration is on the denominator. Now we were told that we have the same concentration across all four enzymes. So we're not gonna to need to really worry about enzyme concentration because that value is gonna be the same. So now we have Vmax on the numerator and Km on the denominator and we're asked for the highest catalytic efficiency. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the uh, enzyme with the highest Vmax and the lowest Km, right? And that's gonna be our most effective enzyme. So let's look at our numbers here. We have, uh, ooh, Little tough, right? We've got 10 to the negative 5, 10 to the negative 4, but then we have a variety of Vmax numbers. So I'm going to show you what I do here, which is that I look at the tens values. So for enzyme A, our Km, which would be on our denominator, is 10 to the negative 5. And our Vmax, I'm not going to worry about the actual number, I'm just looking at the tens values. So this is 20, so it's 10 to the 1, right? If it was 2 times 10 to the 1, that would equal 20. So total, if we kind of do the, just the exponents math here, remember when we divide exponents, we subtract them. So 1 minus minus 5 is 10 to the 6. So I'm going to do this first and see if I can't figure out which enzyme has the best total value, just looking at like the tens values, the exponents. So we have B here, which we can put 10 to the negative 4 on the denominator, and 500, that's going to be 10 to the 2, right? Oh, look at that. That is also... 10 to the 6. So A and B are both tied for first right now. Now let's look at C. C has 10 to the negative 3 on the denominator and 10 to the 2 on the numerator. 
So 2 minus minus 3 is 10 to the 5. So C is out, all right, because it is smaller than both A and B. And then finally, we have D. D is going to be 10 to the negative 2 on the denominator. That's pretty big. I'm already thinking probably not our best. And then sure enough, we only have 10 to the 1 on the top. 1 minus minus 2 equals 10 to the 3. Now we're down to A and B, and we know they have the same exponents. So the only difference is going to be the mantissa, or the number in the front of the exponent. So for this one, we've got 2 over 1, right? 2 on the numerator and 1 on the denominator. And for B, we have 5 over 1, right? Because they're both going to equal 10 to the 6 when it comes to their exponents. So which one is bigger, 2 or 5? It's going to be 5. And that is how we can solve using some math skills and our definition of catalytic efficiency in KCAT, how we can solve a tricky kinetic data question based on a table. So this is definitely a multi-step question. We did need to know catalytic efficiency and KCAT and their definitions. We need to substitute Vmax for KCAT. And then we needed to do a little bit of math to determine which had the biggest numbers given the values provided in the table. Let's move on to the trickiest question yet, all right, you ready for our last practice question? This is the one that's most likely to be on a real MCAT exam. It's got the multi-step, it's got the critical reasoning. So go ahead, pause this video, read through the question and the answer choices, give it your best shot, and then we'll come back together and work through it. This question is showing us two enzymes and a lot of their properties. We've got Hill coefficient, isoelectric point, KCAT, and KD. So there's two ways to approach a question like this, either you can interpret the table first and kind of get some information. For example, what do I know about Hill's coefficient and can I understand about those numbers? Or you can go through the answer choices and eliminate as you go based on the table. For me personally, I do like to look at the table a little bit first because if there's anything I can quickly eliminate from my answer choices as I'm going through it, I want to do so. So I'm going to look at Hill coefficient. Remember, Hill coefficient, Hill's coefficient is telling us about cooperativity. And a Hill's coefficient of greater than one means cooperativity, co-op, all right? So that means that we have multiple binding sites and as one ligand binds or one substrate binds, it actually increases the binding affinity for the remaining sites. So we can see that enzyme A has cooperativity, right? But enzyme B, which equals one, has no cooperativity. So that's a quick changed identifier that we can look for here. Second, we have isoelectric point, or PI. PI lets us know the charge of a protein or enzyme at a given pH. So what I can say is that the isoelectric point is higher for A than for B. And generally speaking, an isoelectric point that is higher, right, especially if we're at like a pH of 7, is going to have a positively charged. So A is going to be more likely to be positively charged compared to B. To B. So I'm just going to write that down. If you didn't know what PI was, you skip that part of your interpretation. All right, for KCAT and KD, I'm looking and the numbers are pretty similar. So I'm going to hang on to that and not stress too much about it unless I need it for our questions. All right, so let's go through. Oh, first up, A, the Vmax for the reaction catalyzed by enzyme A is higher than that of the reaction catalyzed by enzyme B. So we remember from our previous question that KCAT is Vmax over enzyme concentration. So there's a direct relationship between Vmax and KCAT. So if KCAT is bigger, Vmax will also be bigger. So we can look and say, oh, nope, KCAT is bigger for B than it is for A. So A is actually opposite, right? Because our KCAT, therefore our Vmax, is lower. All right, B, enzyme A has a larger net negative charge compared to enzyme B. Actually, we determined that it was probably more likely to be positive, right? Because a higher PI comparatively is going to be more positive. So that's going to be eliminated. Num uh, for C, we have enzyme A exhibits cooperativity, and enzyme B does not. That matches beautifully with what I noted here. So we're going to leave that guy. And then D says enzyme A has a lower binding affinity for the substrate than enzyme B. That's going to relate to KD. Remember, low KD equals high affinity. So that's from our first problem here. So which one has the lower KD is A, right? So A has the uh, lower KD or higher affinity, which is opposite what D is saying. So D is out as well. So sometimes it takes, it's good to be like, okay, enzyme A, lower binding affinity, that would mean higher KD. 
and that's not what we see here. So that's also a good notation to do is rewrite the answer choice in terms of the table to make it easier to understand. So we're left with C. C is our answer here. Now you may have been like, Amanda, for A, how did I know that the enzyme concentration was not impacting the calculation? Like maybe one of them had more or less enzyme concentration. That's fair. And it could be true, but if we're looking at A versus C, look at the question stem. What's most accurate based on table data? So even though there could be a situation where KCAT could have changed based on enzyme concentration, making the VMAX different, it doesn't always have to be true. It's not the most accurate. Whereas C is a very direct relationship. If we have a Hill coefficient of greater than one, it's got to be cooperative. So whenever you have two answers left, one you kind of have to reach for, you kind of have to be like, well, in certain situations, it could be this versus an answer that's like 100% of the time, this is the answer. Go with the answer that's correct 100% of the time. That's why they use terms like what's most accurate, because there may be another decent answer. It's just that C is a better answer. So look out for those especially in critical reasoning problems like this one. I hope that was a helpful walkthrough of how to answer enzyme property questions when their data is presented in tables. Enzymes are a huge topic on the MCAT, so please continue to practice with a variety of problems and styles until you can apply your knowledge to anything that could come up on test day. I hope you enjoyed that video, and as always, happy studying.